Last time, we learned a whole bunch of anatomy about the pelvis and how a bucket can help us draw the simple forms. Now let's take it a step further and put a pelvis in that bucket. If you haven't seen the previous episode about the anatomy of the pelvis, you might get confused. This method of constructing the pelvis from nothing is most useful when you're drawing from imagination. That's really the goal of this whole course, to set you up to be able to draw the anatomy of the body from the vision in your mind. You'll be able to construct the forms starting with the skeleton and build the muscles over that. Premium students, you can start your first few drawings using the 3D model, but then try to do some from your imagination. You want to get this construction down well enough that you can do it in your sleep. OK, let's get started. Step one, the bucket. So I'm imagining a 3 quarter front view pointing to our right. It's not tilted up or down. It's in a neutral anatomical position. Remember, a neutral pelvis simplifies to a bucket that tilts forward. But that doesn't mean the person is actually tilting their pelvis forward from neutral. This is not neutral. This is neutral. Let's start with the ellipse of the top cap, the lid of the bucket. The roundness of the ellipse will be based on how much of the top plane we are seeing. The angle of the ellipse will depend on the long axis of the bucket. The long axis is the line from the center of the top to the center of the bottom plane. The angle of the ellipse on a perfectly round bucket is perpendicular to that long axis. Now find the sides of the bucket. Make sure you follow the original angle of the long axis. Finally, cap off the bottom of the bucket. Step two, cut out a wedge. After establishing the simple bucket, we need to cut out this wedge shape from the front top half of the bucket. The edges of the wedge align with some of the landmarks, so the placement is not ambiguous. I like to find some construction lines to get the placement of the wedge precise. I'll start by gritting out the top plane. Put a dot in the center of the top plane. Find an angle from side to side. In our case, it's horizontal. In some cases, when the pelvis is tilted or when the horizon is above or below the pelvis, this angle will not be horizontal. Then find an angle from back to front. I like to continue these lines all around the bucket as if they're rubber bands. Even ghost them in the back planes a bit lighter. Okay, so now these lines will help us take out the wedge. The top corners are at the aces points. That edge between the aces points is one third of the way down from the center to the front. Put a line parallel to the horizontal line, and now we have the aces landmarks. The pubic symphysis is halfway down the front plane. From there, wrap a rubber band around the bucket. Drop vertical lines from the aces points to that rubber band. Connect these two corners, and there you go. You've cut out the wedge. I'm going to find one more construction line before I move on to the next step of drawing the actual forms of the pelvis. Similar to this front edge of the iliac crest, I want to find the back edge. This one is halfway between the center to the back. Now, these two dots represent the vertical peak of the iliac crest. From there, the crest drops down toward the pieces points behind the sacrum. So, this section of the top ellipse represents this half of the iliac crest, not the entire iliac crest. Now we're ready for the final step. Step three. Draw the rest of the Ooh. pelvis. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to actually draw this complex pelvis shape in this bucket. Let's start from the top and work our way down. The iliac crest has some thickness, so I'll indicate the top plane. From these points, the crest drops down toward the sacrum, so let's find the sacrum. The top of the sacrum is one third of the way down the back plane. This vertical line I drew earlier is the back plane. Okay, so one third from the top is the top of the sacrum. Now we can drop the iliac crest behind the sacrum. From this point of view, 
the left side is very foreshortened and the right side is not. This wedge shape we found is pretty much the final shape. Just round off the corner a little bit to make some more room for the acetabulum. From there, go about one third of the way down for the height of the cartilage. And then a V shape for the pubic arch. Follow this arch of the ischium around a bit and then up toward the iliac crest. The side plane of the ilium is concave, widening at the top to the iliac crest and at the bottom to the acetabulum. The acetabulum is that socket for the femur bone. It's really round and deep. And down here, since we're looking at the inside of the form, we'll see this side plane that shows a thickness. A softened triangular shape for the hole. Okay, let's add the sacrum in the back. Draw a rectangular shape representing the top plane of the sacrum. This top plane tilts forward more than the bucket itself. So this line from back to front will be more vertical than the line of the back to front of the bucket. From the top plane, let's extrude a curved triangular form for the rest of the sacrum. The tip from the coccyx should touch the base of the bucket right in the center. From this front edge of the sacrum, extend a curve around the inlet and connect it to the pubic symphysis. And finally, through this hole of the inlet, we're going to see the back edge of the ischium. There you go, a manageable construction of the pelvis. This pelvis has accurately simplified forms, accurate placement of the landmarks, and accurate perspective. Basically, this method of construction enables you to manage the complex forms of the pelvis while keeping everything where it needs to be. Once we're able to do the same thing for the entire skeleton, we'll be able to pose the skeleton as we wish from our imagination. Then we can attach the muscles to the appropriate origins and insertions, and we'll have a complete body, all from our mind. How cool is that? Assignment. So your assignment for this week is to do three drawings using the 3D model. Pose it however you want and draw it the way I described in this video. Start with the bucket, cut out a wedge, and then draw the pelvis inside. The 3D model is available to premium students only. If you're not a premium member, you can download a few screenshots from the link in the description below. Then after you did three drawings from the 3D model, draw three more from your imagination. Post your drawings in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash anatomy for artists. This week I have six more examples of how to draw the pelvis. If you want to become a premium member, go to proco.com slash anatomy to get extended versions of the videos and a bunch of other stuff. That's proco.com slash anatomy. Giveaway! If you'd like to win premium membership to the anatomy course, Check out the description below for instructions. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you're posting your drawings, use hashtag Proco. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. If you like this video, share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button to subscribe to the Proco newsletter.